It's time for round four of new graphics cards from the green team with Nvidia releasing its new RTX 5070. The little brother to the recently released RTX 5070 Ti, these new cards flesh out Nvidia's mainstream product lineup and are hoping to hit the sweet spot for performance per dollar. Did Nvidia succeed? And when looking at the partner cards, is there a clear best option? Let's find out. It's typically at this point we would go over all the physical dimensions of each of the cards we're testing, but with so many cards releasing this week we just don't have time, so that'll just have to wait for another video. And quickly taking a look at our test system, we are using an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D, paired with an MSI X870E Carbon. This is all on a Windows 11 system using 32GB of GDR5 6200 memory, as well as the latest press driver for the RTX 5070, though I should point out that we have retested the RTX 5090, 5080, and 5070Ti with the latest public NVIDIA driver, as well as retesting the RX 7900 XTX, 7900 XT, and 7900 GRE. And with just 12 gigabytes of VRAM, NVIDIA is not targeting this card at 4K gaming, so we'll start off these charts at 1440p. This would also be the level of performance you'd expect if you're playing at 4K, but using the ultra quality setting on an upscaler. And we can see that our baseline, the RTX 5070 Founders Edition, is just a little bit faster than the RTX 4070 Super, also with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. This also puts it ahead of the RTX 39B RX 7900 GRE and the ever popular RTX 3080. If you do want more performance though, you can get that from the partner cards, though there isn't a big difference between them. The Pollet RTX 5070 Gaming Pro is the fastest card in this test, being 2% faster than the Founders Edition, and basically tied with the MSI Gaming Trio, Asus Tough OC, with the Zotac 5070 Solid coming in basically tied with the Founders Edition. That does mean that at 1440p, the RTX 4070 Ti is a bit faster than all these cards, as well as the RX 7900 XT and the RTX 3090 Ti. The next fastest 50 series card from NVIDIA is the 5070 Ti, which is 23% faster. Moving over to the minimum frame rate chart doesn't really change the standings, with the 5070 still coming in between the RTX 4070 Ti and the RTX 4070 Super. Love make up the resolution to 4K may not be what NVIDIA recommends, but you can get it done, especially since these cards do support PCIe 5.0 and that actually might be helping them, as they do gain a little bit of ground compared to the RTX 4070 Ti and RTX 4070 Super. However, compared to the other new NVIDIA cards, it does lose a little bit of ground, with the 5070 Ti now being 28% faster. That doesn't mean you're in for a bad experience though with these cards, as all of them were able to achieve above 60 FPS on average when playing at 4K with ultra quality settings, so as long as you come in with modest expectations, you should be okay. If you do need more performance though, you could always go the other direction and lower the resolution down to 1080p. This should also be a similar level of performance as playing at 4K with the balanced level for upscaling on DLSS or FSR. And at these settings, these cards are basically tied with the RTX 3090 Ti, and holding pretty steady between the RTX 4070 Ti and the RTX 4070 Super. They do inch a little bit closer to the RTX 5070 Ti, which is now only 19% faster than the Founders Edition, but outside that, the comparisons remain about the same, with the Pollet, Asus, and MSI being 2% faster, and the Zotac being basically tied to the Founders Edition. And when switching on ray tracing, you probably wouldn't even notice a difference in these charts if you weren't paying attention. The RTX 5070 still slots in between the 4070 Ti and 4070 Super, is basically still tied with a 3090 Ti, with the only card really moving around being the RX 7900 XTX, which is now a little bit slower. With all these cards delivering very similar performance, it shouldn't surprise you that basically all of them also deliver very similar power performance, with the Pollet, Asus, Founders Edition, and MSI cards all using right around 230 watts while gaming, but the one card that is different is the Zotac RTX 5070 Solid, which only uses 207 watts and notably less than the RTX 4070 Super at 210. 
but with his bump in performance, all these cards are a bit more efficient than the RTX 4070 Super, with most of these cards being basically tied with the reference model, the Pollet being just a bit more efficient, and the big winner being the Zotac 5070 Solid, which is 9% more efficient than the reference edition, and ends up being slightly more efficient than the RTX 5070 Ti, but slightly less efficient than the 5080. What might be a bigger differentiator between cards is going to be the fan noise. Starting out at the very loudest, that is going to be the RTX 5070 Founders Edition at 37.7 dBA, which is right in line with the RX 7900 XT and XTX, and a bit louder than the reference model RTX 5080. All the partner cards are substantially quieter, with the loudest being the Pilot RTX 5070 Gaming Pro, though that is in its normal BIOS, with its quiet BIOS coming in at 28.5. That sandwiches it right between the MSI Gaming Trio and the Zotac 5070 Solid. If you are looking for the quietest card though, that would be the ASUS Tough OC. With its roll BIOS coming in at 26.2, so about 1.5 dBA quieter than MSI, with the quiet BIOS bringing it all the way down to 22.8 dBA. And when you normalize for noise and power, this is how each of the cards shake out. The order is basically the same, with the ASUS being the best performing card at 55.2C, with the Founders Edition and its smaller design being the worst at 76.7. and quickly taking a look at overclocking performance, and all these cards performed about the same once overclocked, with all of them reaching the same max memory clock, and even with the small differences in max power limits, the overall performance ended up being basically the same. So the performance is decent, though not mind-blowing, and definitely doesn't live up to 4080 or even 4090 levels of performance. How does it hold up in terms of value? Well, the good news for NVIDIA fans is that there are no 5070s in the bottom part of this chart, so that's a win, I guess. With the most expensive 5070, the ASUS 5070 Tough OC, coming in at $740, basically tied with the RTX 4070 Ti and RTX 4080. That does make it a little bit better value than the RTX 5070 Ti at $1,000, though if you could get that card at MSRP, it would be much more appealing. Next up is the Pollet RTX 5070 Gaming Pro and the MSI RTX 5070 Gaming Trio, both at $650. The value here isn't that bad, with the value coming in roughly at the RX 7900 XTX, though it does have less value than the RTX 4070 Super or even the RTX 4070. Still, with these prices, you do get a much better cooler than the Founders Edition. If you want value though, that's going to come from the MSRP cards, namely the RTX 5070 Founders Edition and the Zotac RTX 5070 Solid. Both these cards offer basically identical levels of performance, though the cooler on the Zotac is a little bit better, and it does run just a bit more efficiently. If you do need to prioritize space optimization though, the 5070 Founders Edition does offer the same value and performance. And under the big assumption that these prices hold, it's not too bad of a spot for NVIDIA to be, with these cards having better value than pretty much any card released by NVIDIA in the last few years. The lingering question though, did NVIDIA do enough to stave off AMD and Intel?